Hi YouTube, Alex Desla back here again with uh, another video for you. So, in one of my previous videos, I showed you the slide rules that I had purchased, well, that I had made because I couldn't find any to purchase. Um, I said they were wonderful tools and that they were an excellent way for doing math and teaching math. And, I mean, I could see, I can honestly understand why somebody might be skeptical about that kind of claim. And so, I kind of want to prove it a little bit, uh, that these are indeed wonderful tools and would be excellent for teaching children mathematics. So, let's, uh, let's do a couple of examples of uh, just, just how wonderful a tool these slide rules uh, actually are. Uh, pen going a bit here. Now, let's imagine we're uh, we're trying to teach fractions, and we want uh, to get the concept across to uh, somebody who's struggling with mathematics or a child that uh, that a fraction is just a, a, a ratio. Uh, just it's different numbers; they they mean the same thing. So. How do you how do you go about really explaining properly to somebody that two over three equals four over six equals six over nine? Well, you can use a tool like this now. You, you explain uh, to your student or uh, to the person that, the, uh, that when you put everything over here uh, in the right orientation, where you put your numerator over your denominator in any position, that the numerator and denominators that will show up across the slide rule scale are equivalent. So, and to show an example of that, over here we have 2 over 3 is equal to 4 over 6 is equal to 6 over 9. Now, because of this phenomenon, if you follow the numerator uh, or the denominator back down to uh, 1, um, then that gives you, uh, depending on which one of those is your answer, that gives you your, um, well, I mean, it gives you the answer to your math question. And the, the answer came up the second that you put your numerator over the dom and denominator in your scale. You just had to go and read it. Um, so to give an example of that, so 2 over 3, well, that's equal to what, what over 1? Well, if I've got my 2 over 3, and we'll plug that in over here, just to show you. 2 over 3, and now I follow it back. All the way back to the 1. Now you see here, the number that's over top is greater than 0. In fact, uh, it looks like it's 6.66666 around, right? Yes. Well, so this is a thing that happens when you're using slide rules. Obviously, they're not infinitely big, but the, the scales are repeating patterns. So when you go past the, uh, the one in uh, going in one direction, you, you, uh, you take away a decimal place. Uh, if you go past the one in the other direction, you add a decimal place. And so this is how slide rules let you do calculations with any magnitude. You just, you have to keep track of the decimal place in your head, but I think that's a good thing for teaching children and students ratios in mathematics. It makes them think about it some more. Now, 
how does this factor into uh, all kinds of different problems that uh, you as a student might have to uh, tackle in school? Well, how many times do you have to do uh, a question like, I don't know, 2x over 5 equals... And actually, no, we'll take the... Uh, uh, we'll take the two out. Let me get a little bit, a bit of water here. We'll keep this lesson simple. But how often would you be approached with a question that would be, say, x over 5 is equal to 7 over 6? Now, the way that you would solve this normally is you would then say, uh, x is equal to 5 times 7 over 6, which is equal to 35 over 6, which is equal to uh, 5.87 around, no, uh, 8. So uh, that's how you would have to solve that if you're going to follow the traditional steps, uh, writing it out by hand. But using a tool like a slide rule, uh, the question all of a sudden becomes really simple. See, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to come to my scale and I'm going to put my 7 on top. Then Okay, I'm in the correct, uh, just going to make sure I'm in the correct decimal place here. Yep. So now I'm going to slide my 6 to be underneath my 7. And if I follow it back to my 5, I get 5.83. So I didn't have to do any additional rearranging. I didn't have to do any additional multiplication steps. I just have to know and understand that uh, the slide rule is going to represent a ratio for me. And when you start playing around with this and you start seeing how numbers of any magnitude can be done with a slide rule, you start understanding that um, big numbers are not really all that much scarier than small numbers. Uh, okay, the total number of digits that you have to work with might, uh, that are not zeros, might affect things. But uh, really, for the most part, uh, with a tool like this, you get three digits of precision, approximately. And with our measurement tools and most of the math that you do, three digits of precision is generally what you kind of, I mean, really, if you think about it, like when you're copying stuff off your calculator, you tend to, you tend to round those digits, right? So, and, and even then in school, your teacher tells you to round them. <laughs> I mean, uh, they tell you to get the formula to its final state first and try to do it with as little rounding as possible. But, uh, but you do tend to round a lot when you're doing measurements or uh, any sort of practical mathematics. Um, so let's do another example here of, uh, of a situation uh, that could occur that might be uh, useful to somebody. Um, let's say that I have a tree. And this tree is, is old here. Uh, it's got a bunch of little, little ants uh, working their way up the, uh, the trunk here and they're eating away at the trunk. And normally that wouldn't be a problem, except, uh, except you know, my house is over here. And 
my neighbor's garage is in the background over here. I can't climb the stupid thing because, because if I try, it might fall down because of what all the damage that the carpenter ants have done at the base. So, uh, and then I got my garage over here and I got my boat sitting in the driveway over, uh, over here. And, uh, and I can't really move the trailer because I got a flat on my, uh, on my tire. So it's kind of stuck and I need to take that tree down. I need to get it to go, uh, yeah, go in a direction where it's not going to damage anything. Now, the distance between here and here, we'll say, uh, is my second shortest distance. Between here and here is my first shortest distance. But from here to here, we'll say, looks like the tree might fit. Does it? So, how are we gonna uh, how are we gonna tell how tall that tree is? Well, we wait for the we wait for the afternoon, and we wait for the shadow of the tree to start to show up on the ground over here. Make a nice little shadow for us on the ground. And then we come by and we plant a little stick. And that stick makes a little shadow on the ground. Now We're going to say that that stick is, uh, we'll say we have a two meter tall stick here, and we measure the length of the shadow, and we find, uh, and we see that right now it's got a, uh, say, 0 0.3 meter shadow. And over here, we'll say that we have a... 20, no, that would be really far. We have a four meter shadow. So, how tall is our tree? So let's set up the equation. So we have two over 0.3. Now, there is no 0.3 on a slide rule. We have to remember that when we go down a decimal place, we actually just use this number on the scale and we we have to remember that we went down a decimal place which is fine so I'll put 3 uh, underneath 2 on my scale now over here I have a 4 meter shadow so I'm gonna go over the 4 and I'm gonna remember that 4 meters is a full tens place higher than 0 0.3 meters. So the result that I'm going to read on the top scale is also going to be a tens place higher. So now I come back to my slide rule and I read the results on my slide rule using my little line here. And I can see that that is uh, just a, a tad under 27 meters. So now, uh, uh, probably not a very good idea to chop it down towards the house. I should probably take the time to move the boat and have it try uh, and get a, a cord and make it fall down into the driveway. And that is an example of just how simple uh, that these slide rules can make your mathematics and uh, make your life as somebody doing mathematics. I think that they're wonderful tools. I think it's a shame that they were lost to uh, to students. I think it's because uh, like uh, flash uh, or calculators are wonderful tools, absolutely wonderful tools. 
they do, uh, but they're very poor at teaching mathematics because they don't make you do any mental work and they don't make you consider anything while you're doing those mathematics. Um, I think that a calculator is a, um, is a fine and wonderful engineering tool and should be used by engineers for designing functional and real products. But uh, probably what would be best for students learning mathematics would be to be stuck with one of these for doing their multiplication and division. And to also be stuck with one of these for doing their addition and subtraction. Visual, uh, tactile visual tools uh, assist greatly in learning mathematics and getting the concepts of numbers really nailed down and built into people's heads. Uh, symbology, or uh, the number symbols, are actually very, um, very difficult to hold inside of memory in, uh, in large chains, um, uh, especially for most people. But, uh, but pretty much anybody with uh, a moderate level of training uh, will, uh, using one of these tools, will eventually develop an analog for, uh, for this tool inside of their head. And because of the simplicity of the various rows, um, what ends up happening is people are able to store quite a number of rows inside of their head. And because they can do that, and this works as more like um, the tool that you build inside of your head ends up being more like a memory register uh, on a computer. So uh, you can actually end up doing some pretty complex mathematics. Uh, by having the numbers registered and stored inside of your head on an imaginary one of these. This tool isn't quite like that. Uh, it's, it's very similar. I found when I was playing with it and using it lots after I had just designed it, I began to become more and more familiar and un uh, with and understand the spacing on the scales on an intuitive level. And um, that's why in my first video when I was talking about this, I was saying, I think if I grew up with this tool and I had to use it for my entire high school career, that I could reliably do triple digit ma uh, multiplication of any magnitude uh, with no issues. Uh, I, think it, uh, I don't think I'm special. I, I think that, um, yeah, that anybody would be like this, especially when I see the videos of how am uh, amazing children online uh, using this tool become at holding numbers in their head and being able to do, uh, perform all kinds of complex mathematical functions. Um, and even if you're not a young student or a child trying to learn or something like that, uh, or a teacher trying to, uh, trying to teach young students and you're just a hobbyist, uh, these kinds of tools are excellent to pick up and learn and play with because they help you approach mathematics in a way that you maybe wouldn't have thought of before and uh, that maybe for some people might be easier uh, because lots of students struggle uh, with different mathematical concepts and math and holding, holding quantities in their head and understanding those quantities. And the way the school systems are set up right now, they're not presented with an alternative. They're just expected to learn the number line and be okay with the number line in their head. But if you give students additional tools and different ways of doing things, and you allow them to do that, you might find that some of your students who are struggling do better now. Uh, and, and some of your students that are okay with the number lines and that kind of stuff, okay, well, maybe, uh, maybe they'll be fine anyways. Maybe they'll actually struggle with this. Or uh, maybe, uh, maybe they would struggle with this. But it's about options because not everybody's the same and not, every, and not every tool makes sense the same to every single person. And as I've shown here, uh, you can have very different ways of approaching your mathematical problems and still come out with uh, valid and good answers. So I hope this tutorial uh, or this discussion has been helpful for a lot of you. And if you would like to support this channel and the work that I'm doing, I'll post a link below as to where you could purchase one of my models of slide roll. Um, I 
I don't sell them for very much money. They're like two dollars for a copy of the print. Uh, what I would what I would really like actually is um, what would be wonderful is if some company could uh, could reach out to me so that we could uh, get a, a production line going and make a big batch of this. And what I would like to do is I would like to sell them for like a few dollars a piece uh, here in North America where, uh, or in the West where people have lots of money uh, to be able to uh, to be able to buy and afford all kinds of things. And then I'd like to take uh, the proceeds from that profit and I'd like to print off millions of these and bring them to, uh, to poor and remote areas of, uh, of the developing worlds and places where people don't necessarily have access to great, uh, to electronics or uh, robust access to electricity and, um, and give them a tool that is, uh, that is durable and doesn't require that electricity that they can they can use to teach their kids uh, the concepts of mathematics um, I mean it would be it would be phenomenal but uh, you know one can dream right I'll see you later